plain and simple, why did she drop out? Plain and simple, you, you presume she dropped out. Plain and simple, well, it's, it's the Pierce forces who realized the jig was up. They did not want this hearing to go forward. They did not want this hearing to go forward for the same reason I don't order steak at a roadside diner. You know in both instances it's not going down well, and that's why they wanted out of this. There are a lot of questions that you need to ask as the media. Your job is not over. Your job is to continue to ask the tough questions of the Pierce campaign. Uh, you should go out and talk to Mr. Carrard. You should go out and talk to Mr. Coughlin, and you should not let Mr. Pierce up for air because they know full well what happened here. Uh, back in 2004, uh, I fought Mr. Carrard back then on the uh, Republican Party vote by uh, mail uh, fraud, and we got an injunction shutting his process down then. Um, you know, one of the worst things that have come out of this whole clean elections process is, uh, you know, people like Mr. Carrard who, who game the system. It's not funny, it's not right, it's not appropriate, uh, and our Constitution mandates the purity of elections. What Mr. Carrard is trying to do is uh, confuse the concept of political campaigns with the electoral process. Just like you don't get to, to stuff the ballot box, you don't get to stuff the nomination petitions with signatures of people who don't really support the candidate at all. And that's, that's where the violation has come in in this matter. We have alleged very serious violations here. What we have alleged is that this campaign is engaged in a Class 5 felony, and it's now up to the authorities to pursue it. We've done all that we can do. There is nothing further we can do. But can that, that be linked to Pierce like at all, Pierce, or will though? it just stay with the Cortez campaign? Well, we believe that it could be linked to Pierce. We think the evidence was very compelling, that uh, the campaign was complicit in this process of recruiting not just Ms. Cortez but others. Uh, we believe that the others were smart enough to realize this was as dumb an idea as it comes. Uh, and they had to find just the perfect candidate to, to, to get this done. Somebody who wasn't smart enough to take a look at the, the whole uh, process and how it would play out, yet somebody who was willing to be, quote, a team player. And team player seems to be the phrase uh, that the Pierce uh, campaign was using throughout this whole process, wanting a team player. In other words, somebody who's willing to go out there and take a hit. This was the gang that couldn't shoot straight. They didn't understand that somebody could bring uh, a challenge, that that meant a court action could pursue. And if a court action could pursue, that meant depositions could be taken and subpoenas could be issued and people could be compelled to court and testify. Do you have but do you consider that Lester Pierce violated ju judicial ethics? You will, uh, yes, I, believe, I believe you will find that, <laughs> that uh, uh, Lester Pierce was involved in carrying Cortez signs around. You'll find that Lester Pierce was uh, uh, taking uh, his nieces around to uh, get petitions uh, signed for Olivia Cortez, and you will find that he was also involved in meetings uh, in the Pier Russell Pierce campaign to strategize with them. Uh, the evidence is pretty strong in that regard. How could you not know what was going on when your own brother was out doing this, and your own sister was out doing this, and your own uh, two nieces were out doing this? You know, either he's not being honest or this Pierce family puts the concept of funk and dysfunctional. And I think I know which of the two that is. Hey, how are you? Hey, how are you? I'm good. Have fun in there. Hey, Judge, you, you're going to miss the court hearing tomorrow. I heard you got served. Were you, were you prepared for that? Don't touch my camera. Hey, That's don't get it out of my face. Judge, you're not. You came you're towards me. You're coming you just okay. assaulted me. You want to try it again? <laughs> you want to try it again? Do the same thing, <laughs> same distance. Try it again. No, thank you. I heard you tried you to evade service. Huh? I heard you tried to evade service. No, I didn't. I was right there. They gave me service. When the first time they tried to give it to you? I don't know when they tried to give it to me. Yeah, and you told them to take it back? And, and oh, no, no, no. They had it wrong. They wanted to change the time on it. Uh-huh. And I said, you legally have to get a new time, so just bring me another one. Yeah. And so they did, and I took it. Not yeah. a problem. So you didn't ride around with Shiloh Sessions and getting, and getting signatures? No, I didn't get signatures. Really? I can't sure get signatures. That. You sure about that? I can't get signatures. No. I'd like to ask you that in your oath, Judge. Okay, it'd be the same answer. <laughs> from a judge. You may want to apologize for that. I am sorry. You should be. I am, absolutely. May right. I shake your hand? And in that case, I won't file charges. <laughs> if you ever try it again, I will. You understand? <laughs> judge or no judge.